Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Now, even considering that this is a virtual event, it is not a typical meeting. What we have today is an incredibly special guest with us for a very wonderful reason. On behalf of the American Red Cross of the Pacific Islands region, we're proud to welcome Jason Bitzer. Good morning. Please also join me in welcoming the American Red Cross Training Services representative, Zachary Tamayo. And another warm welcome for our American Red Cross Regional CEO, Diane Peters Wynn. Now, let's talk a little bit about why we're here today. And that, the long and the short of it, is emergencies. They can happen at any time, doesn't matter where either. It could be in the grocery store parking lot, family wedding, a hot day at the community pool, in the office, even in your very own home. The frighteningly similar thing about all of these events is that it usually involves a crowd of people just looking at the victim, not really knowing what to do next. That is until a hero emerges from the crowd. And I like to use that word hero, it's a pretty heavy word. So let's talk about what that means. Just to do a little research, there's three main points I think we can agree on. One, it's a person admired for achievements and noble qualities. Two, it's someone who shows great courage and three, it's a person who is idealized for outstanding achievements. And if you go about saving a life without question, I believe that fits the definition for all three of those boxes to be checked. Now we're here today to honor someone with one of American Red Cross life-saving awards. That's someone who's an extraordinary hero. And let's talk a bit about the history of the Red Cross life-saving awards. The American Red Cross Life Saving Awards has a long storied history that has its roots as far back as 1911. The Life Saving Awards, since its start, have been about providing recognition to those who in a time of emergency have used their life saving skills or knowledge to save or sustain a life. The program evolved from one standalone award into three, and that began in 1928. There is the Life Saving Award for Professional Responders and Healthcare Professionals, the Certificate of Extraordinary Personal Achievement, and the Certificate of Merit. And that's the one that we're here today for. All of the awards and their recipients embody the spirit of the Red Cross by using action to help alleviate human suffering in the face of an emergency. Red Cross training gives people the knowledge and skill to act in an emergency and save a life. And there's a variety of online blended, which is online and in-person skill sessions and classroom courses that are available. And you can check that out at redcross.org slash take a class. Now the Certificate of Merit is the oldest of the Life Saving Awards. It was established in 1911 and evolved in 1928 to provide a more fitting and lasting recognition to a larger circle of nominees. The Certificate of Merit is bestowed upon Red Cross trained individuals who have no obligation to respond to an emergency, but do so anyway. The awards recipients in this 100 plus year span have been lifeguards, police, firefighters, and everyday citizens. The Certificate of Merit has borne the signatures of 16 presidents of the United States of America. Now, since the Life Saving Awards revival in 2018, the Red Cross is proud to announce that we have awarded 908 individuals as of our last tally anyway, worldwide. And as a result, it's helped save over 400 lives. And we are about to add to that number right now. So at this time, Jason Bitzer, I'm glad to see that your camera is on. And Diane, you as well. I am gonna turn things over to our regional CEO, Diane Peters Wynn. Oh, Diane, you're on mute. Thank you, Matt, and welcome everyone. Last year, on the morning of April 8th, Jason Blitzer, Bitzer paddled out to catch a few waves before starting his shift as a Honolulu Ocean Safety Lifeguard on the North Shore of Oahu. The surf was roughly six to 10 feet that day when Bitzer recognized Jamie O'Brien, a professional surfer, in trouble after taking off on a wave. O'Brien had split his head on the treacherous reef of the world famous Bonsai Pipeline. Jason paddled over on his bodyboard to O'Brien and that he was going in and out of consciousness at that time. The surfer regained consciousness and with Jason alongside of him, got him to shore. 
At the time of the rescue, the ocean safety lifeguards were not yet on duty. But nevertheless, Jason Bitzer responded to someone in need. Jason's Red Cross training, which started at the age of 14, made him Red Cross ready. So with that, Jason, I would like to go ahead and present the award. We have here a beautiful medal, which is our Certificate of Merit Red Cross medal. I'm holding it up. Hope you can see that. It also comes along. It comes along with this life saving award of merit with our logo. And now I'm going to read the certificate. So this is a American Red Cross Certificate of Merit. It is awarded to Jason Bitzer for selfless and humane action in sustaining a life. Issued by the American Red Cross headquarters in Washington, D.C. And it's signed by the President of the United States, as well as the Chairman of the American Red Cross. So we congratulate you, Jason, on this job. Well done. You're on Thank mute, you guys. Matt. Just chime in real quick. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. So I threw my son in here just to be a part of the moment, if that's cool. So guys, um, Zach, I can jump back off mute, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, I think Matt's on mute while he's talking. You know what I am? I can't believe that. I just I just did that whole thing. <laughs> I did want to say uh, thank you so much to Jason, and I want to turn the mic over to you. If you want to tell us a little bit about the event, and I see that Jamie is on the line as well. So if you two want to take a couple of moments, by all means, the floor is yours. I think I think my son wants to talk, but <laughs> yeah, th <laughs> thank you guys, man. Um, this whole thing was really unexpected, uh, to be honest. Um, that rescue with, with Jamie, I just want to um, point out some, a couple things. Uh, lifeguarding is never like a solo effort. Um, we had some definite help there with um, Scott Cleland and also another surfer um, named Jarris actually helped spot the rescue. And uh, being that Jamie's such such a professional and literally in my mind, he's the best surfer at Pipe, I was almost hesitant to um, paddle straight over. Normally I'm like within no hesitation, but because uh, his float suit actually um, brought his airway above water, it took me a half a second and it was almost like I had to fight the reaction like, ah, Jamie's okay, Jamie's okay, because I see him do crazy stuff day in and day out for years. But um, yeah, uh, Jamie's head was above water, like I said, because of his float suit. He was going in and out as I was getting closer. And then uh, when I got close to him, he was definitely um, not orientated. He was just orientated times two, like he didn't really know what happened. And it was uh, kind of like a shocking thing to see. And then his buddy, um, Scotty, paddled over and uh, literally was one of those things that I'm glad that I fought the, the reflex to just be like, yeah, he's okay. And that's, that's kind of a testament that usually I always say, just go first. And even myself, because we kind of get hesitant when we see these guys that can basically handle anything. And it just shows like Jamie, uh, I think I told you guys back about three years ago, was a part of a rescue from my high school friend named Dylan. And uh, he uh, was very close to death at Pipeline. Um, he was unconscious when they got him to the beach. And I don't think uh, if it wasn't for GT Jamie and um, another good friend, Tahude, I would have lost my high school friend. So it's kind of like a full circle thing. Um, these instances happen at Pipeline more often than not. So they're going to happen again. And um, Jamie being proactive with his safety, he's the best in the world out there. And he still does his thing. And he still makes sure that he has some extra precautions. And also being me, like a professional lifeguard, thinking like, oh, you know, the best in the world don't need your help, but they do. And I might need it one day. So it's like one of those things that I just, it's a full circle. Lifeguarding is a team sport. It's not just about me. It's about like everybody in the water kind of looking out for each other. And Excellent. also just one thing too, I want to bring a point that um, this, like a lot of our rescues was done before work. Um, I've had multiple rescues at Pipeline and so have my friends all over the island really that happen between those hours of like say 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. or after 5 30 and uh, just having professionals there and towers open when you hit the beach with a patient having extra guys there it's like a, it's a full like you know kind of a pit crew that you need to successfully do this so this is kind of bringing light to that fact that everyone already knows that having professionals there is going to make it way safer so I'll throw it to you Jamie man thanks for letting me talk
Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, we, we live right here at a very beautiful place at Pipeline, but it's the, the most dangerous wave in the world and, and uh, multiple um, head injuries every year, broken legs. And uh, it's, it's an honor to have Jason Bitzer out there because he is a waterman. And when you know a lifeguard is actual real good surfer out of pipeline, you kind of feel comfortable. So I remember kind of when I woke up from the accident, I was like, whoa, Jason, like Jason's here. And then I was like trying to paddle off. He's like, where are you going? I was like, I'm, I'm going back out. And I, was, I wasn't even paddling in the right direction. So it was nice to kind of have someone there to kind of help guide me and, and make sure everything was, was good and just answering all my questions because I had so many questions when I hit the reef and um yeah just just uh very fortunate that um this is the first day I wore this Buell float suit that I designed with the wetsuit company and it has pads just in case of that one moment and that one moment the first time I wore the suit I needed it the most and I'm not sure if I, if I didn't have the suit on I probably would have been underwater longer I would have taken a lot of uh, water in my lungs and that would have been a whole nother story and um yeah thank thank you jason for um saving me <laughs> that's excellent thank you both so much congratulations once again jason and mahalo for your heroism all right at this time i do want to extend a special red cross thank you to zachary tamayo for his efforts in nominating today's award recipient so everyone applause for zachary <laughs> And humble too, we always appreciate that. All right, now in my experience with the American Red Cross, I've learned that heroes, the brave men and women willing to step forward and help a stranger during their greatest time of need, they're everywhere, they're all around us. But I've also learned that these individuals are not common because to act quickly and decisively during a crisis takes a level of courage reserved only for a chosen few. So congratulations again, Jason, and keep up the phenomenal work. It's our hope that Jason's heroic actions inspire others to get trained in skills that save lives. And like Zachary Tamayo, you too can nominate a hero for using life-saving skills on our Red Cross website. All you have to do is go to lifesavingawards.org and keep the recognition going. And with that, I'm gonna wrap up today's presentation. Thank you all once again so much for showing up and congratulations once again to our Certificate of Merit winner, Jason Bitzer. Aloha, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yes.